Hey guys, what's up? So in this video, we are going to see how to reverse engineer a .NET based application using a tool called DNSpy. Without further ado, let's get started. So first of all, let's go to a site called crackinglessons.com. This site is actually interesting and has many challenges and also courses that makes you learn reverse engineering. And it's really good. I have done few of the courses. And so here is a challenge, crack me 80 in which they will be giving you a binary, which I have already downloaded. And you have three tasks to do. One is to patch the binary file in such a way that no matter whatever the serial key you enter, it should give you a success message. And now the second one is that to extract the serial key as such for a given username and then create a key. Gen. So let's get started. Here I have already downloaded the binary. I can demonstrate it. So I'll just do give a username and I'll just enter one of the random serial keys. And if I give a check, it's going to say wrong serial key. Now let's check whether this given binary is a .NET based binary or a native binary. Just drag and drop it into the tool called Dictated TC, that is DIE. You could download it and then just drag and drop it here. It's going to give you the information about it. So once it is completed, you can see that there is a presence of CLR header, which indicates this application is based on .NET. Also, you could see that it is portable executable and it is in 32 bit mode. Portable executable is actually the binary format used by Microsoft and Windows. So almost everything that is the DLL, or the exe files or any executable which works with windows is today is in the format called portable executable so with this tool we were able to detect it is a 32 bit binary which is based on dotnet now we can use a tool called dnspy to crack it or reverse engineer it so i have already downloaded it it has a 64 bit version as well as a 32 bit version so if your program or application is 32 bit version which is dotnet based then go for the 32 bit version of the dnspy so I had already opened it here. You could just right click and remove it from here. And then to open a new one, just click and drag it here. Depending on the binary and its size, it might take some while. But yeah, here it is very straightforward. You could select between which language you want. I'm comfortable with C sharp. So I'm going ahead with that. Now, if you expand it, you will see the various header and other information. Also, you could see the form one. And if you go down, or like let's click here and then do a search wrong serial key so there is only one occurrence and this is the message box that's being shown when your key or the serial key that you entered is invalid so now what we have to do is we have to bypass this logic and patch this binary so that we will complete the first challenge that is to bypass this pin no matter whatever is the value of the serial key. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna right click here and give edit method. The language is C sharp. You could change the language to whatever the language you prefer. And in this window, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna put true or, that means irrespective of the value that is obtained on the second half of this. The second part is like checking whether the text to that is nothing actually your serial key is being compared with the derived serial key. and if they are equal, this will be returning true. But now we have modified the condition in such a way that it is always evaluated to true because true or whatever it is, whether it's false or true, it is always true. So it will be coming inside this and then you click compile. Now you could see that the if condition totally disappeared and it's just one message box saying the correct serial key because the compiler optimized it so that technically that if condition is invalid because if it is always true, there is no need to have that if condition. So it actually modified it accordingly. Now you could go to files and save module, and then you can name it as patch. Okay. And once that is completed, you could go here. You will see another binary that is patched. You can start it up and then give anything you want. Here we go it's always showing the message correct serial key. Now what we want to do is we want to find out the logic or actually derive the serial key when we give a specific user. How are we going to do it? So again, we are going to just undo whatever we did here so that you could see the if condition came back again. And what we have to find out is the value of the 
variable value because that is what is being compared with the text to variable which is the serial key that we are going to input okay so we have to find the value of the variable value which is very straightforward you all you have to do is just put a breakpoint here and start the application we keep it already false now this application popped up now you could give something like and tick check this time it's going to hit the breakpoint because that is the exact condition is being checked before showing the message box whether the serial key we entered is right or wrong based on the value that is derived in the value variable so now you could see the value variable here is very straightforward it's actually a combination of text to 3 plus text to 1 and text 4 and text 5 text 1 that is the text variable is actually nothing the name that you have entered and its first four characters are taken and converted into uppercase and then the text 3 is the product id that is the first part in the product id if you go to this binary you could see there is a product id that is being mentioned x398 there are four sections to it so each is being obtained here that is the first section second section and the third section so technically it will be like first part of the product key then followed by the name that you have entered four characters of it and then the second part of the product id and the third part of the product id combined is the actual serial key for that given username so you don't have to assume this you could the reason why i entered the breakpoint here is if i give the name paul and if i come down here you could see the value variable is being derived to the actual key so i could just copy this okay and i will just stop debugging i'll remove the breakpoint as well now if i go to the application i'm going to use the older binary which is not patched here i will just demonstrate and i'm going to enter something random unlike the patched one it's going to say a wrong serial key okay and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to paste this key which we got from the debugger and for the name only the first four characters are taken into consideration and it is case insensitive so no matter whatever you give after this it doesn't matter the only the first four character matters okay now if you check it's going to say correct serial key because we have successfully fished the serial key for a given user now the third objective is to create a key gen key gen is technically nothing for a given name and for a given product id there should be a corresponding serial key that is the logic here different applications might have a different logic in deriving the serial key but for this application that is the logic so if you create a program even if it's a cell script even if it's a vv.net application or whatever application if that application takes these things as the input that is the product id as well as the username then it will give you the serial key any program that does that job is called a key gen for the simplicity i'll just go to dotnet fiddle so here i have already done it so here you can see what i did is i went here copied the logic from here to here and instead of the values from the text box because it's a console application and we don't have a text box so i'm just giving the name here and only the first four characters of it and then the product id for the corresponding application and if i run it it's gonna give me a key so now if i copy this key i go to this one if i use it with the name paul pjp it won't work because this is a key that is derived for the name alice so if i give the name alice it's gonna say the serial key is correct so this is how you make a key gen you basically derive the logic with which the application derives the serial key and you implement that logic separately in a standalone application here i just used an online compiler you could write it as a standalone application where the user is prompted to enter their username that you are willing to give and the product id that is being displayed on the application or any other input and with that we will be deriving the value that is the serial key and we'll be giving it to the user now the user can actually run the original application they will be just entering the corresponding username and the serial key that is given by your keygen so that it will work successfully hope you guys enjoyed this video thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe thank you